And it's just a huge honor for me today to be podcast interviewing Eric Sperling with the Social Television Network. Thank you so much for coming on Thanks the show. Thanks for having me, Howard. We met a, a year ago, two yeah, years year, ago? A year and a half ago. Down it, it's studio. amazing. You were, uh, well, here, let me read your bio. <laughs> Eric Sperling is the managing director of the Social Television Network, which is a video marketing and advertising company based right here in Phoenix, Arizona. He started the company back in 2011 after leaving a successful career as a local television anchor and producer. As a sports anchor, he noticed how local media and advertising were shifting to more digital and social platforms. They put their talents as storytellers to work creating videos for local businesses, and teamed up with digital marketing experts to become an all-in-one video marketing solution. The company started in Eric's upstairs bedroom, but they have grown tremendously over the last seven years and have just opened one of the largest dedicated social media video advertising production facilities in the Southwest in downtown Phoenix. A majority of their video advertising clients are in the healthcare space, including dentists, orthodontists, and oral surgeons. And I don't, you know, with hip, and it's not hip, but I don't want to embarrass uh, their names because I didn't ask him but he's got the most famous oral surgeon orthodontist pediatric dentist and general dentist in the valley is your right. clients and outside of dentistry you're still in healthcare. you're in uh, a major for dignity health and uh, dignity what is it Correct. dignity, dignity hospital? health hospital systems, health hospitals banner, banner, health, banner health and barrows neurological Aeronautica, i don't know yep. if you're familiar with barrows but um you know mayo clinic cleveland uh, MD Anderson, probably the script, probably the greatest hospitals in America, and Mayo Clinic uh, only put two satellite locations, one down here in Scottsdale because of all the retirees, another one in Florida. But Barrows is probably the number one global neurological. They're issue. amazing, yeah. They well, I mean, so when you go down there, you think you're in the Middle East. And we do a lot of live surgeries with them, so a lot of live brain surgeries, and to see those surgeons, you know, what they're doing, and to hear them talk about what they're doing, it's so impressive. I mean, we'll be in sometimes four or five hour surgeries with them, and the, the work that they're putting in and the advancements they're making, it's great to have them in our own backyard, I mean, being here in Phoenix. But it's amazing when you leave, I mean, America, um, you know, they think they're number one, but they're, they're number one in some things. They're not number one in making cars or, you know, the number one car makers are Germany and Japan. Uh, number one in education is in Scandinavia. But America is number one in healthcare, military, insurance, banking, finance, music, movies, and, uh, and when medicine, I mean, when you go to Mayo Clinic, when you go to Asia, Africa, Central and South America, the rich people say, in my country, if you get sick, you don't want a doctor, you want a pilot, you want to fly to America, you want to go to Mayo Clinic, you want to go to Barrows Neurological Institute. And they have, um, uh, I'm one of my doctors uh, in downtown Phoenix has uh, the guy that does my, uh, that did my uh, eyes. Uh, the laser keratotomy, uh -huh. whatever it's called. He has a map of the world with pens where all his patients, where all from. His patients are flying in. I from. mean, yeah. it's just the whole map's covered in pens. People pay for premium health care. Um, but anyway, so, um, you know, um, Amazon started with books, but didn't call it books.com because the reason Jeff Bezos started with books in 94 was because that was the only thing you could sell with text yep. because you were sending it, uh, the, the, the internet pipes were so small. And he knew he wanted to disrupt direct mail, and they were selling clothing and cooking and all these things that needed images. And he said, that'll be later mm -hmm. down, down the road. And now the pipes are so big that um, you can stream videos. And I, I cannot believe that Netflix is now worth more in Wall Street than Disney, oh, yeah. Yeah. which which I think is an internet bubble. <laughs> I think that's ridiculous. I mean, Disney has parks like Disneyland, Disney World, Euro Disney. They have cruise lines. They have, I mean, I, I, I smell that 94 to 2000 internet bubble. I mean, I mean, um, gosh darn, Amazon's coming up on a trillion dollar valuation and American Airlines has more profit than, than Amazon. Um, but um, but if, if, is it true to say if a picture's worth a thousand words, a video's worth a million? And you look at statistics, Howard, and I believe I have this right. I think by 2020, 85% of all internet traffic is going to be video. It's just that pipe that you mentioned. Say so, the stat again. I think it's 85% of all internet traffic is gonna be video by 2020. That's why you were, you know, you were showing me, we were watching a video on our phones right before we even started this podcast. These are getting bigger, these are getting better, the screens are getting the resolution, everything is video driven now, and so why would you wanna read an article when you can watch a two minute video? And so that's what we're seeing a lot of success with the healthcare industry is, is they wanna educate the consumer, they wanna educate their patients, and the best way to do that is through storytelling videos, and that's kind of where we come in, and you were reading a little bit about the bio, where 
we were local television people, and that's what we did for a living. We told stories. We were able to, you know, get the message to the consumer in the right way. And we see a lot of healthcare professionals who kind of struggled with that over the years. You know, they're super smart. They, they're great at what they do, but they don't know how to convey that message, especially in video form now. And so we help them do that. So we create different styles of videos for them, like what we're doing right now. We're having an educational talk about video marketing. And then we'll create other videos, the one you just watched and we can mention by name for the Dental Brothers, where it's a little bit more of a storytelling, including testimonials and what they do for their practice. And Are you allowed to say his name or would he be would he be? Oh, I think he's be, we're talking about the Dental Brothers, right? They're, 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 yeah. they're great guys. So I think they are okay. great guys. Yeah. Timothy, do you pronounce it Shafe? Shaf? Who's that? Oh, yeah, that's one of the things. He's not one of the brothers. Yeah, they have oh. Paul and Dan Gaffney, who are the brothers, and then Tim is another one of the dentists over there. Is that, that's not one of the brothers, though? No, that's not one of the brothers. Okay. It's not um, one of the dental brothers. There, there's the dental brothers right there. Um, and there's Dan a great, Gaffney and yeah, his brother Dan Tal Gaffney. Tall, Which one's uh, the older? Uh, I think Dan is the older one. And I'm going to tell him you said that. Watch. <laughs> Just a picture? Dan, Dan, Dan. Why do you look so much older than Tal? <laughs> If you watch, Get a have, moisturizer, buddy. Get some face cream. <laughs> He's a great guy. We have yeah. their, They're we legends have, in our backyard. Yeah, and they're on camera telling us. Um, they've been with us. They've been running one of our video marketing programs now. I believe they're in like their seventh or eighth month um, that they have set a record. They've had their best month ever. Um, I forgot how long they've been in practice, but best month ever in their history and attributing that to us. They've tried direct mail before. They've tried a bunch of other forms of marketing and they're finally seeing the results they wanted. Um, and it's because of the video marketing that, uh, that we're putting out there for them. Well, you know, um, God, I, the dentists are going to shoot me if I say this one more time. So I'm going to say it three more <laughs> times. So, you know, so there's 211,000 Americans who are living with an active license of practice dentistry, but about 150,000 are general dentists 30 hours a week or more, 30,000 are specialists 30 hours a week or more. The general dentists are netting 175, the specialists are netting 330, um, and a couple of things you see is, well, the general dentists, they won't even spend 3% of collection on advertising, the orthodontists spend 6% all day long. That's why they net 3.30. Mm -hmm. um, another thing is that um, the general dentist, you call them and they can they never have a room to squeeze you in or an emergency, but the endodontist, the oral surgeons, the orthodontist, they all have two emergency operatories that are never even scheduled. You could walk into any endodontist, oral surgeon, orthodontist in America today and the girl talking to you, she could say, the receptionist say, well, you know, let's get you in a chair and, and we'll squeeze the doctor in. And here's the dental office. Well, I don't have any, any place to put you because chairs aren't our cost. I mean, our PPO reduction <laughs> is 42% of cost. Labor is 25%. Uh, labs 10, supplies 6. Operatories don't even make the list, but we don't have one to put you in. So they, they don't understand that their constraint is chairs. Um, but, um, but here's the funnel that I want you to talk about. Um, so we know 300 people have to land on your dentist website before nine convert. Okay. Well, fix that. 300 and only nine convert? And, and you go to that website and, and you have a mugshot as opposed to a video? Are you kidding me? A video would be 10 times better. And then when nine call, the untrained staff can only convert three to come in. And then the three people come in with just a cavity. We're not talking bleaching, bonding, veneers, or fancy. Just a cavity. They only convert one to get drill, fill, and bill. And that's how they get to collecting $750,000 to take home one hundred seventy-five. dollars Because that one filling, three had to come in. For three to come in, nine had to call. For nine to call, 300 had to land on their website. And it's like, dude, if you could fix any part of that funnel... You'd be making the money the specialist did. Just get an extra operatory. Just spend more money on marketing. But what I want to focus on you with is um, um, it's 3% of the people who land on the dentist website, of all the experts that have tracked it. How can you get more than 3 out of 100 people who landed on your website to push a call button that and convert to a, a call? That is a great question, Howard. And one of the, again, 
big keys to success we've seen across healthcare as well as the dental clients we have is something I'm sure a lot of dentists out there are familiar with called retargeting. So you just mentioned the amount of people visiting a website. Okay, my homies don't know what retargeting okay, is. Okay, retargeting a dentist. is the ability to send content out to anybody that has recently been on your website. So what we will do is we'll put a tracking pixel on your website. And so when those 300 people visit the website, the next time they pop on Facebook or Instagram or YouTube or one of the most popular social media platforms out there, they will see a testimonial from your practice. They will see what we would call a tutorial or what you can expect from your first visit. So we are closing that conversion gap. You mentioned what can dentists do to, at any point of the funnel, get more precise and more consistent. And that is one of the keys to success. I would, that would be the first place I would look, especially if you're generating a high amount of web, like 300 is decent web traffic. If you're getting that a month and you're only converting three, the key is to stay in front of those 300 people who have visited your website. I mean, it's basically like- Okay, but, but, you, but explain, so, so, um, 300 people land on the website. Mm -hmm. they're, they're getting three out of 100 website landings to convert. Because you're also... So, so th those 100 people land on your website, three convert. But you're retarding. I'm supposed to put a cookie on my website? Mm -hmm. Correct. So when they start searching other places, when they, that, well, that, that cookie's person's on there? The, when that person leaves, they're, they're doing a research, right? They're, they've checked out three other practices, okay? When they jump back on their smartphone, whether it's that night or they're going to go to Facebook or they're going to go to Instagram or they're going to go oh, on YouTube. I they're going to jump on one of these social media sites. Your video is going to be there. You, and not only just, you, not just a video, a storytelling video, a video that creates engagement because we don't just want to advertise to consumers. We want to tell your story to consumers or potential patients. So that is a very critical part in the patient journey. I'm taking notes. I'm not texting. Yeah, yeah, are you texting? Uh, no. What are you texting? Are you texting your son? No. So I... Um, <laughs> Um, so, so and it's a very easy thing to do. It's not a not a hard process. It sounds complicated. It sounds techy, but it's not. So how how does okay? I know my dentist. They they love to take courses on bone grafting and implants yeah, and what design. Is, what is how does targeting how does about? he know? How does she know if she has cookies on her website? that are being retargeted, how, how would she know that? Yeah, so uh, you gotta have a web developer, obviously, or somebody who's built your website, and then someone like myself, or another, you know, somebody who's in charge of marketing, to send you what is called a tracking pixel, whether that's from Facebook, whether it's from Google, um, they all have, LinkedIn has tracking pixels now, and once those are installed on the website, your tracking pixel is now active. And it gives whoever is creating the content for your social media sites the ability to stay in front of people who've been to your website. So they Does should, that make sense? I'm sorry. Yeah, so they should just, specifically <laughs> ask the, their web developer, do, do we I, have yeah. cookies on our dental website for retargeting purposes? There would have to be a, you're right, there would have to be a retargeting purpose because you just want a cookie there and you're not doing anything with it. I mean, I'm surprised I don't know that because I love cookies and that's why I'm fat. <laughs> In fact, the cookie monster is my idol. So, so that's what they ask their, their website developer if they have cookies on there for retargeting purposes. It might be the website developer. If their website developer is doing any sort of social video or social media marketing, that's where it would start. Okay. Because there's no point having and cookies then, on your website without doing anything with them. And then when that person goes on Facebook or Instagram, if you have an ad on Facebook or Instagram, and that person gets on their smartphone with your cookie on there, that Facebook ad will show up to yep. them? As long as that person has created the ad to function that way. So I'm gonna create like that dental Could dentist Do dentists routinely figure that out or is this kind of a sophisticated thing? That you a little sophisticated. Have? Yeah. So that Dental Brothers video, the one we watched before we started, anybody who's been to the Dental Brothers website doing research, the next time they pop on Facebook, they're gonna see that storytelling video of the Dental Brothers. And again, that's one of the reasons why they've been able to have the best month they've ever had because they're staying in front of all that website traffic. They're not relying on, like you said, the, the phone call to close the deal necessarily. Well, you know, you um, said something very e uh, interesting that I hear marketing experts say a lot, that marketing is really about telling stories, marketing is telling a compelling story about you and your company. Yeah, how, not how advertising. Yeah, exactly. That, that is, is that the essence of what you think advertising is, is storytelling? Especially in healthcare. We're not saying, you know, you see billboard ads, you know, I'm talking about digital billboard ads. 
with now with social media now, and think about how people are scrolling, right? They're scrolling through Facebook, they're scrolling through Instagram. They need to stop and engage in something. So if you're not putting a storytelling video out there, nobody wants to see your ad. Nobody wants to see how great you are. They want something that draws them in. And so what I mentioned retargeting. What we do a lot of is we'll come up with creative content that will draw somebody in. Like the, I'm going to keep using the Dental Brothers as an example. They came down to our studio and they did a segment on um, how morning breath can lead to um, more serious diseases. And you help me out because you're the dental expert. Is it periodontal disease? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the whole segment on periodontal disease, what we're able to do is track the people who are watching that video. Were they watching on Facebook? How long did they watch for? And then retarget to the people who have watched that video. So in addition to having people go to the website and staying in front of them, we're also staying in front of the people that are engaging in their storytelling content. To answer your question, that's why you don't just put ads out there. You put content that people want to watch out there. But here, here's, um, God, I, don't, I, I, I hate negativity and I don't want to go negative and all that. But, you know, the founder of Facebook is Mark Zuckerberg. Mm -hmm. Did you know, no, no. Do you know his dad <laughs> is a dentist? And I, added, I think I read that in your book. Yeah, he sat in this chair uh, three times. The last time he came was with uh, his four kids. Um, we're both bald dentists with four kids. <laughs> one of his kids started Facebook, and one of mine is in jail <laughs> and wears an ankle bracelet. And uh, I'm just kidding. Um, but um, but he. <laughs> I didn't but, know if I should laugh. But a lot of <laughs> dentists, a lot of dentists think that um, Facebook advertising is they'll make a post. Like say they, they make a video. Say say they have pull out their iPhone mm -hmm. and they make a video deal. They post that, but then they'll boost their post. Mm -hmm. But a lot of things I'm reading is that when that when Facebook says, "Oh, you boosted your post and you had five thousand views," you mine that and like almost ninety percent of them were like under six seconds long, which was mm -hmm. really uh, scrolling. And and the things I read about that, I'm like saying I don't want to trash Facebook, but those metrics are designed to make you buy more boosted oh, yeah, posts. Absolutely. But I mean, if you have a three minute video and almost all your views are under six seconds, no one watched your video. They were just scrolling through Well, that's scrolling, the key. So if it. you put in I a I mean, have you heard this controversy about oh, absolutely. their video metrics? Yeah, I mean, that's why they do. You know, you look at the view counts and that's anytime somebody's watched for three seconds or longer, it's, you know, it's counted as a view. Three, so, sec three seconds is how long it takes your thumb to scroll over it. Yes, so. And, and, they, were, and they were really, I mean, I, I think it's an ethics issue. I mean, they should know if you watch the video or not. And they'll give you, and that's the thing, when you're buying those boosted ads or you're, you know, you'll get detailed analytics. You'll see three, 10, 50% or more. So what we do is we use that cheap traffic, right? It's cheap to go out and buy Facebook time. So you don't necessarily want to stay in front of the people who've watched your video for three seconds. You want to stay in front of the people who've watched 50% or more of your video. So I don't, for, for dental practices, for any healthcare practices we're marketing, if we're sending out and we get 100,000 impressions, we don't care about the 70,000 that have blown right through with a three-second ad. We want the people who really engaged in the video. Did they watch for 50% or more? Those are the people we want to stay in front of. So you can take advantage of buying cheap traffic at the top of the funnel and then staying in front of them with the more storytelling content. But cheap traffic, it sounds so much like cheap trick. So that, great to me, band. that would be a yeah, great flame. thing. Flame. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame yeah. from Missouri, buddy. Um, um, but when you're, we could talk when music you, too. When you, you said watch fifty percent of um, the video, but what's the sweet spot length of a video? I mean, should a video be? I mean, how how long this is, are this, these videos? This is the great debate, right? How yeah. long should a video be? It depends on where that is in the funnel, too. So what we've seen is if, for example, when we're creating a video for, let's say, a cancer center, that video can be five minutes long. If you are researching cancer, if you've got a loved one with cancer, you're going to watch all five minutes of that video because you want to learn everything you can because you're doing your due diligence. If you're trying to grab somebody's attention on Facebook, it's going to have to be shorter. Um, if you're creating something that is very educational, like a tip video, or again, like back to the Dental Brothers and their periodontal disease, we do those for two minutes. Those are two minutes videos. Two minute videos. Two minute videos that, that last on Facebook. Do we need to stay in front of the people that watch for 20 seconds? Not really. They watch for a minute or longer, we know that's a hot audience. We know those people are interested in what we're talking about. So those are the people we want to stay in front of. So we're using the length of the video to determine who to stay in front of too. If you're just putting an ad out there, it's got to be super short. If you're just trying to advertise and maybe brand awareness, it's got to be really short. It's got to be about 30 seconds long. That makes sense. So the more important the decision, mm -hmm. we, we see that on Dentaltown too. There's, there's two groups of people on Dentaltown. 
um, half the people just log on and read what's up on today's yeah. tech topic. Like, like the first thing this morning, you know, the front page of the Wall Street Journal was about an orthodontist who graduated $1 million in student loans. And so that just exploded right. on Dentaltown. But then, but then uh, there's another behavior, like um, they're thinking, should I buy a $100,000 laser or a $100,000 chair side mailing? So they'll go to Dentaltown, they'll do a search for like a uh, um, laser, and they'll read for like three hours. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying is that the um, the more important it is, like a hundred thousand dollar decision, or you're dying of cancer, they're gonna watch a video for five minutes. Also, the but frame if it's of gonna be the frame of mind. There, and you mentioned search mode. If you're in search mode, absolutely, it can be a longer video because you're researching. If you're in what we call social mode and you're scrolling through Facebook or Instagram, you're in discovery mode, right? You're there just to discover stuff. So it's much harder to grab somebody's attention when they're in social mode than it is in search mode. So we create different videos for different modes. So the social videos are different. So search mode could really be called research mode. Yeah. Search yeah. mode is research mode. You know mode, what you want, right? You're you, looking and, up that laser. And you called uh, social mode is what was it? It's the other? more discovery. Discovery. Yep. You're there to discover something. So what's the most important subject in healthcare that you would watch the video the longest? Um, are you talking about like... Uh, Different service lines or different service? What do you mean, subject? I mean, what, what, what? I mean, you're in, you're, you know, seventy percent of your business is in healthcare. I mean, dentists, physicians, banner, neurological. Right, right. I mean, I imagine if I had a spinal cord injury on my one of my kids, mm -hmm. you know, uh, hit himself on a trampoline or swim pool. I mean, should I? You'd be watching those videos as long as they were. Right. Exactly. And you want to watch testimonials. You want to see what those patients are saying about that doctor. So, the point is when we're trying to figure out in social mode and in search mode, social mode would be a video, let's just use, go back to cancer, liver cancer for example. Um, we did a video about an FDA approval for a new liver cancer drug. So that, that grabs somebody's attention on social media. In the search video is much different. The search video is about the actual program itself at the hospital. Like what technology do they have at the hospital? So back to your question about subject, when it's when you're in decision mode and you're researching and you go, okay, this, is this the cancer center for me or is this the cancer doc for me or is this the dentist for me or the orthodontist for me? That is a much different video than you're gonna use out on social media in a cold audience to grab that social traffic. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. You talked about a, a drug for liver. I am a health fanatic and I think uh, cranberry juice totally cleans out, detoxifies your liver. Do you have any? Which is why every night before I go to bed, I always have a double gray goose with a splash of cranberry. <laughs> it balances, just, counterbalances the Just to detoxify my liver. Um, um, when you talk about video testimony, I got, I got a lot of thoughts on that because number one, um, you know, you can't talk about the difference between boys and girls out getting written off as a sex, especially if you're a boy, but the research is clear that Boys uh, say under 1,800 words a day. Women are north of 6,000. Every time this study is done, when they go into apes and monkeys, every time two male apes or monkeys, apes, it doesn't matter if it's gorillas, chimpanzees, orangutans, bonobos, gibbons, every time two males fist bump, communicate, the woman will go talk to five. And, you know, she's playing, nursing, feeding. I mean, and in healthcare, all the research shows that well over 90% of all family dental appointments are made by mom. Chief medical officer of the and, family. And when dad, and you can verify this in the office, when mom comes out, you say, hey, do you know, I'm, we're filling out our insurance. Do you know your daughter's birthday? Boom. Do you have their insurance? Boom. Dad comes out. Uh, dad, do you know you, you have two children? Do you know yeah. their birthday? <laughs> <laughs> no idea. Well, is it in your smartphone? No. Uh, well, how, how do you not know your child's birth date or their insurance number? So, so, so back to that, if the average woman is saying north of 6,000 words and talks to five people for everyone the man does. Um, testimonials are very important in healthcare because yeah. women are making all the appointment. And I think the video testimonials is golden because everybody knows when you see Google um, um, testimonials that hell in your own family, half mm -hmm. the people are crazy. Yep. So you don't know that lady saying that. Yeah, I don't know, is she crazy or what? But if you saw the video, you can you see could, crazy. You can see crazy. Yeah, yeah you, you can, can see crazy. crazy. If, I, I have several uh, ants where, you know, if they were saying the deal, you would be giggling. <laughs> 
But then yeah. there's other people, and, and then no, and then exactly and then right. good news. Like it's one thing to say, "Oh my God, his office was great," but then to deliver, de showing, giving them the mirror after you delivered veneers, bleaching, bonding, or Invisalign, and she gets verklempt and sheds a tear. Yeah. You would just dump dopamine, serotonin. You would just, I mean. So I think social confirmation is very important in healthcare because women are five times more social than men. I mean, I can't tell you how many men I know where the man has two friends and the wife is texting uh, 10. You know, you just always see that ratio. So talk about video testimonial. Do you think they're gonna replace just the Google text? Just, yeah, just like, always just like text was replaced by photo, photos being replaced by video. Yeah. Do, do I really think video testimonial for social confirmation is yeah, and I love what you said about it, 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 it's so true about being able to look through the screen or, or, or see crazy if you want us to call it crazy, but also see authenticity. When you, you know, think that, about see crazy, <laughs> Megan Ryan, who knows? Yeah, you're thinking, yeah, thinking, I was thinking, thinking crazy. Ryan, come sit right here so the, the people on YouTube can see <laughs> normal. <laughs> And no, I'm just kidding. But uh, but yeah, but you, yeah, you can and see you don't, crazy. And that's why, and that's another reason why you know sometimes you'll see a television ad or uh, it's an actor, right? It's an actor giving a testimonial. So in healthcare, you want that real, authentic testimonial. You want to connect with that person who's doing that research. You want a testimonial who is going to speak to that mom who's making the decision or that family member who's making the decision. So when we tell our clients to, you know what when they're researching to find their own testimonials to who's going to come in who's going to appear on camera we want to figure out who we're speaking to and we want that testimonial as soon as that testimonial starts talking we want the person watching on screen to go yeah that's me i understand what he or she's going through and they're making complete sense and oh my decision's made i'm going to watch this video a little while longer and now i'm going to pick up the phone and make a call so yeah you're right the authenticity component is extremely important in video because the text, the Google text, is going to be there. It's always going to be there. But people are doing lots more research, right? They're not just looking at one thing anymore. They're going to the website. They're going to your Facebook page. They're going to your YouTube channel. And the bigger decision they're going to make, the more research they're going to do. And when I was little, only rich people could fly or you work for big corporations or government or whatever. And they were all dressed now up. these people are, are making amazing websites, these complicated procedures like all in four dental implants. Or cosmetic. And people are saying, well, you know, I live in a small town in rural America. I think I'm going to get on Southwest Airlines. It's only $230 round trip, and I'm going to fly down there right. because I don't trust that my doctor from this small town of 5,000, that when you go to the website, is like one page, doesn't even have a picture right. of them. And he says, oh, yeah, I could do implants. And I, I lived through this um, with, a, um, with a friend who wanted to have a cosmetic uh, surgery. And um, and went to several, went to three doctors and called me and said, "Come on, you know all these doctors. Who, who's the best?" And there was a female surgery, cosmetic surgery, and I thought, "Well, well, I don't, I don't really know." And so um, she asked me if I go with her to these two consults, and I went to one in Tempe and one in Scottsdale, and their brochure for this breast augmentation. It was a brochure that they bought from the American Academy of Cosmetic Surgery. And, and the office looked well. So what I did is I, so I got on the phone and I started calling around the doctor they said no. So we went down to his place and his place said, well, there's only four types of breast augmentation, you know, and, and he looked at her and he said, okay, you're, you're this type. And then he pulls out a big screen, you sit on the couch and there's before and afters and every person on the left looked just like her and every person on the right looked just perfect. And so when you're selling the invisible, you know, when you go to sell an iPhone, well, I trust Apple. Mm -hmm. When I go buy a Hershey's chocolate bar, I assume Hershey's or Dr. Pepper or Budweiser, they all figured out. But in dentistry, you're selling the invisible. Mm -hmm. So you're saying that I have four cavities. Well, how do I know that if I have four cavities? Yeah. And, and the women don't trust, they, they don't trust so much more than men. Like if a woman's air conditioner goes out and she calls the biggest, and you know who they are in Phoenix, the biggest advertiser, they say George Brazil. And George Brazil comes out and says, you know, I can't fix your air conditioner. You know, you need a whole new air conditioner. Well, how do, I mean, anybody would know you'd rather sell me a $5,000 new air conditioner right. than $50 of Freon, but she doesn't know. When the engine light comes on, 
I grew up with five sisters. I, I call it the idiot light because I played Barbie dolls when I was 12. I, I never did any engine work with my five sisters. So when the idiot light comes on and you come out there and you tell me that I need a whole new transmission and I'm thinking, well, how do I know that? So, so when a doctor tells you, uh, I know you do a very famous pediatric dentist in town. Their babies are their most important mm -hmm. to mom, far more important than their husband and their grandparents. And the doctor says, your baby needs four cavities. How does social media help sell trust and integrity, especially in a time of our lives where the number one thing I've seen deteriorate in my 55 years of life is trust of yeah. government, social institutions. Congress has run a single digit 9% approval rating for two decades. Yeah. Nobody trusts Congress. Everybody knows it's all bought and paid for. And now you're starting to see the loss of trust in sacred institutions like the FBI, the Centers for Disease Control. When I, I was on that last water fluoridation campaign, I said, well, the CDC is us. And, and one in four people in Phoenix say, the CDC, they're just a shill for the pharmaceutical research scientists. Or this firm, and it's like, wow. So how can you sell more trust and That's integrity so, yeah. that, so that when mom takes baby to pediatric dentist, she's no, like, I take baby to pediatric dentist too. Do I'm, you? I'm dad, yeah. I'll take, yeah. I'll take my kids to, to, to the dentist and, you know, um, making some of those decisions. So I'm looking. How do you sell trust? multiple points of engagement. Um, and the, and it, I'm gonna just go back to what we do with the storytelling approach. It's finding the people who will authentically talk about what you just said. To the, if it's a pediatric dentist, we wanna capture somebody on camera who is having, uh, who had a legitimate experience with that pediatric dentist, who's gonna talk about the trust factor. And honestly, you know, in healthcare, that is what comes out a lot in the testimonials. It's why they trust that doctor or why they trust that physician or why they trust that, that, uh, that dentist. The why becomes a huge part of the testimonial, um, whether it's their bedside manner or their expertise or their schooling. Um, you want the trust component to come through the screen on camera no matter what we're doing. And the more you can capture that, in an authentic type of video environment so that somebody watching can go, yes, I trust that person and I'm gonna go see that. And they're gonna get the same experience. Obviously, if you watch a testimonial and you get a completely different experience from that dentist or that physician, all right, well, that didn't work and they're not coming back. So it's important as us, the people putting this content together to not stage anything to make it as authentic as possible. And that's one of the things we preach to our clients is we're not an advertising agency. You know, We're not going to hire actors and create a false sense of who you are as a, as a practice or as a, as, a, as a hospital or whatever. We are gonna put the real story on camera. And so if that makes you nervous, then you probably shouldn't be doing what we're doing. You know, if you, don't, if you can't produce those testimonials, if you can't produce that trustworthy content, then maybe you should do some other type of advertising or just do something in print because that does happen where you run into a business and they're like, oof, oof, we, we can't produce that type of content. Well, then <laughs> that tells you something about who you are as a business and that's gonna really hurt you when people are researching you and looking for that type of content, that trustworthy content. I didn't, I'm sorry, I didn't go into the whole FBI, CDC thing. Well, you know, it, it's amazing because, you know, when I got out of school, it was, it was just the, the majority of all the dentists just had a listing in the white pages right. and maybe paid extra to have it in black yeah. gold. Yeah. And now, and then full page ads came out, which I was buying in 87, which was extremely controversial. And a lot of the older dentists all just kept telling me to knock it off. Um, but it kept getting Why? so many... Because they thought it cheapened the deal. Mm -hmm. um, they thought, you know, if you had cancer, would you pick somebody out of the yellow pages? Uh. And I'm like, well, you know, I really don't think the market thinks getting your teeth cleaned is the same <laughs> as having prostate cancer. Right. I just don't think yeah. those are two equivalents. Um, but now, um, now that, I mean, this was an IBM supercomputer when Seriously, I was in exactly. high school. And so now with uh, the internet pipe so big, um, and the, the moms are researching so much more. I mean, you have to get an A on your website. And, and, it, and, and I'm telling you guys, I get a gazillion emails. Thanks for always emailing me, Howard at dentaltown.com. Uh, please tell me where you're from. Tell me how old you are, what country you're from, your website if you got it. And um, my gosh, um, so many of them. You know, if you, if you 
if you email me, I just take off your blah, blah, blah at stntv.com. Just put a www and I go to their website. So I look at Dennis' mm -hmm. websites all day long, every day, and half of them are a joke. And I know my dentist. I know them. Five years ago, they were at a dental convention, and some guy says, hey, I'll build you a website. So he came yeah. over there, did the right thing, gave you a credit card, built a website five years ago. I was on three today that still have Flash. Yeah, so what, it, what I do is I go on those same websites oh. and I look to see, is there video? Is there a tracking pixel? Because I can see that, and so I do the exact same thing. I'm researching people to see how far Will you research mine, todaysdental.com? Yeah. Do you want me to do it? Absolutely, okay. yeah. man. I'll look and see what um, you got going. And, um, um, but in your experience, what percent of, give letter, letter grade, A, B, C, D, F. Because my homies all made straight A's to get into dental school, med school, or law these school. These are all your homies, okay. Yeah, but what would you give these A students and undergrad who made it into dental school, what would you give their website letter grade when you're looking? If you looked at 100 dentist websites, um, what would the distribution be? You know be? what? I, you, you mentioned you, know, you see some that are flash. I, I'm pretty pleased with a lot of the websites I'm seeing right now. From, maybe I'm just researching give a lot. Give a percent of breakdown of A, B, C, D, F of what you're seeing. From... Dentist, just dentist? Yeah, just so dentist. This includes orthodontist, this includes... Yeah. An orthodontist is dentist. Now, he doesn't know that. If you go up to an orthodontist and say, are you a dentist? He'll say, no, I'm an orthodontist. You're like, really? Because on LinkedIn, it says you went to dental school and graduated the DDS. And he's like, oh, yeah, but I try to forget those. Then I went on to become an orthodontist, and now I walk on water, and I don't talk to the little people. But I've only met one oral surgeon in my life. We were climbing Mount Fuji, <laughs> and we were in Tanzania. And the guy, there were three dentists and an oral surgeon. And the guy, um, the guy turns to the oral surgeon and he says, uh, so are you a dentist? And he said, yeah. And I thought, oh my God, I just heard an oral surgeon admit that he's a dentist. I've never witnessed that. <laughs> he laughed so hard. It was so damn funny. But anyway, but yeah, just dentist, dental specialist. It's a C. I mean, it's, it's the it's, average is a C. Average is a C. Yeah. So the presentation of the website isn't bad. It's the functionality that, that needs improvement, right? Where's, there's no video on the home page. You know, I'm there. Keep me there with a video. Let me zero in on something. Put that video right on the home page. There are some dentists I've seen out there who do a good job with landing pages too. Where and my homies don't know what a landing page is. So a landing first page, it was redirect. Yep, yep. Now no, it's no, landing it retargeting. page. Retargeting. 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 <laughs> retargeting. <laughs> First it was retargeting, now it's landing page. So a landing page... This has something to do with Ann Landers, I assume. Exactly, yes. No. <laughs> it is a specific site. It's not even a site, really. It's a URL that is designed to capture ad traffic. So you mentioned like the all-in-one-day dental implant, right? If we're going to do... Is that what you called it? If we're going to do an ad for that, and we're going to post that ad on Facebook, we don't want somebody clicking on that ad and then showing up just to the home page of some dental office's website, right? That page better be specific to the ad we were pushing. So we want that whole page dedicated to the all-in-one thing we were advertising. So landing pages are maybe, uh, that's probably a D right now for, for most dental practices where they should be branching out and creating landing pages. And then- So if someone is searching they want dental implants and they just go to your website, they might have to do three clicks to find out Absolutely. that you do dental implants. So he's saying, if you do an ad on dental implants, it should land on the page of your website with just land for you. It's my number one complaint with Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. I always give them the money, you know, they're always raising yeah, money, yeah, I always donate, give them the money. Yeah. But you do a search, like when was this, uh, you know, blah, 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 and it starts to, to section like, oh, that's the information, right? So then you click away to peek you, Little do you know, I have to That's a great scroll analogy. through 19 exactly different things to find about. the information you're looking you're for. You're searching for one specific thing. Don't have that person end up going, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know where I'm going. So have a very specific landing page with one call to action that's make an appointment if you need all-in-one you know, dental implants. And there's a video right there that talks about your all-in-one dental implants. There's a testimonial there. There's an explainer video. It just, it's... The exact thing you need okay, to do. Okay, dentistry that uncensored. We only talk about, um, you know, dentistry uncensored. We don't talk about anything you agree on. So I know what my homie is saying. They're saying, well, you keep mentioning video, but that's because you sell video. I sell videos. You yes, sell video. I do. So, so since you sell video, prove to her that, that having a video on that website is more important than a still picture. By, by the way, I mean, my gosh. Bring up your phone. I'll, I'll hold up my phone. Yeah. If you go, you're not going to read about all the dental implant stuff, you're gonna to wanna to press play 
do this for 90 seconds and you're good. That's why, again, back to the top of the show, or these, that's why these are getting bigger and better because people want to watch a video when they're researching. So if I was scrolling through Facebook, I saw that dental ad, I click, I'm on the landing page, I'm not going to try to read a bunch of articles about it. I just want to watch a video and be done with it. And you know what? Another thing that I want to say about videos, the illegal aspect of it. When, um, um, when we were little, um, the number one cause of car fatality was drunk driving. Drunk driving doesn't even make the top five. It, it's been eradicated, and the country never really celebrated how successful they were. On Now it's number one is distraction. Mm -hmm. So when people are driving and they're an hour commuter, they're texting LSF, but I can't read your text website for an hour, but I'm driving in traffic and I'm thinking about Invisalign, and, but well, I'm stopped for a second. I click the video. Now I don't have to look at the phone. I can listen to your sound. I can listen to that. I can, you can hold that in driving. I don't know if you should be promoting well, driving I, and watching I video. Don't, I mean, I, I appreciate it. I, but. I, and I don't. I, what I do is I, um, I turn off my phone. I, I really mm -hmm. do. Because we're such monkeys. I mean, you'll be driving down I-10, 65 miles down, you hear a ding. Oh, my gosh. But you your monkey to, yeah, walnut yeah. brain's like, boo, well, I, can look yeah, at I heard it. a ding. No, I turn mine off because I'm such... A small walnut brain. In fact, I did that 23 and Me. Uh, that's oh, yeah, owned yeah, by Google's yeah. uh, Sergey Brin's wife. I'm four and a half percent Neanderthal. I used to think I was dumb, but now 23 and Me has proved to me I'm four and a half percent. No, I, I am. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm 4.5 percent Neanderthal. And um, and uh, no disrespect to Neanderthals, uh, but well, anyway, right. you look around. You're, you're, there's four out of the five people around you are on their phones while we're while we're driving. That's, that's why a I, different conversation. It, you know, yeah. I did three Ironmans in a, in a row, and the reason I subbed to an Ironman is because part of the Ironman is a 112 mile bike ride. Every single year in our Ironman riding group, every single year one of our group was ran over and killed by a car. And then you're sitting there thinking, okay, I'm doing this so I can see my grandchildren graduate from high school. Not because I have some fetish to ride a bicycle down the B-Lane Highway. Yeah. I mean, one time a semi-truck went right by us, and two of us, the wind, blew us over. Because that, and so, um, but when you're out there and you leave the house at 5 in the morning, I got, I got a couple bike rides. I, I go to Maricopa and back, that's 45 miles. Or I go around South Mountain, that's 45 miles. Or I go to the Fountain Lakes and back, that's 90 miles. So we leave at like 5 in the morning because it, it gets hot. You know, by 10 o'clock, it's 100 degrees. Every third car, you see this blue mm -hmm. hood. They're just driving down the street like that. And you're like, man, I am one Facebook post away from just being dead. Mm -hmm. So you have to move your exercise inside. You know, I, I joined Lifetime Fitness because I, I don't want to get killed. And the first time I did the tour of Mesa, that 70-mile bike ride with the uh, that great endodontic group. What's the great endodontic? Jason Hale, Ed Carlson. Um, yeah, Jason Hale. We've done three podcasts with those endodontists. And he used to sponsor um, uh, the dentist uh, on the 70-mile. First time I did it, a woman in our group going through an intersection, an 80-year-old lady, T-bone right over killed her didn't stop went to the next intersection T-boned a truck and killed that guy too oh my gosh. and they they think that she might have had a stroke or she blacked out or fainted or something but um how did what how did we, did we get there how, how from, did we get there what that the was oh, amazing oh, we, were talking, we were talking about videos on <laughs> we're talking about videos on somehow the you wanted to watch a video while you were driving which well, I no, don't recommend no, doing. No, but they, they listen to They can listen, video. yeah. yeah. And, and listen I, to somebody's hey, listening to this right many, now in their car. You know how many dentists have told me that um, they don't even listen to this podcast on iTunes? They, yeah, listen, they listen to it on to YouTube? It. Yeah. So they open up the yep. YouTube video, but they're, they got an hour to I do it all the work. time. I listen, yeah. to, I listen to YouTube. So yeah. I think, um, and then what's also sad is the dentist. You know, I love the dentist, the fact that they love being technically excellent in dentistry. Yeah. Um, but then when you ask them very important questions like, well, what is, how many people land on your website mm -hmm. each month and how many of them convert? They don't know. Yeah. And then I'll say, well, okay, um, so we just finished the first quarter, January, February, March. How many incoming calls did you have? I don't know. This is why I, I, I feel sorry for you. And I'd I'd, I would I would never go into your business because <laughs> you could get an A++ and deliver 100 people to their website and their website's so horrible, none can convert. Even if you went and built their website. So then you, so 100 people landed and say 10 converted. Yep. Their untrained staff is going to answer the phone like, can you please hold? And then they're on hold for five minutes so they hang up. And then when, and then when they, so, so you could get an A 
and their team could get three D's and F's in a row, and then at the end of the day, he's like, well, I gave, I gave Eric Sperling money, and it didn't do anything for me. I'm so glad that you brought that up because we're seeing this in 2018, and it's not, I mean, obviously it's going to get more intense too, this multi-attribution thing happening when it comes to marketing. And you're right, A, it depends on a lot of it on the intake itself. You're right, are they doing a good job on intake? But also, when you have all of this marketing going on, you have videos on Facebook, you have SEO going, you may have some traditional things going, right? You may have some direct mail, you may do some radio spots. Too many businesses focus on what's called last touch attribution, right? Where's the last, they ask, oh, where'd you hear about us? Internet. Where, then ask, where's the first place you heard about us? Whoa, <laughs> it's a different question, right? Where's the, where did you discover, where'd you first learn about us? So most people, when they are filling out an intake form, they will just mark in it because they probably went to Google to find either the phone number or the location. And that is where that practice is going to put a majority of their marketing dollars because they're saying, oh, we got so X many clients or patients because of the pay-per-click ad we did or the SEO component we're putting in but they're not looking at the entire patient journey. So to your point earlier, that's exactly it. It's I gave so-and-so X amount of dollars. How do I measure it at the end of the day? If A, we have an attribution issue, but then B, we're not properly handling our intake, right? And to be honest, it's not, you're never gonna get it right. I mean, you're never gonna get it perfect where you're gonna have a sit down interrogation with a patient, right? Tell me, where'd you hear about us? And let's talk about all the ways that you may have, I mean, it's, you just, not going to do that. You're going to have hand them a form and they're going to circle Facebook, they're going to circle TV, they're going to circle radio. But what you have to do is start understanding and looking for overall lift in your business to say, wow, everything that we're doing or we've been doing is having a major impact on our bottom line. And to your point earlier, do they know that? Are they savvy enough? Are they looking at <laughs> who's, who's monitoring that? Is that an office manager? Is that the, the, the dentist themselves? You know, where is that business mindset coming from and I hear a lot of doctors and dentists will tell me that they wish they went to school for marketing <laughs> they wish they would boy I wish I would have done marketing in school because these are the questions that haunt them when they're going over their books they're going over their marketing they want to understand everything that they're doing um, so multi-touch attribution now is a really big deal it's figuring out what avenues of marketing are the most effective for me. And there's different ways to measure each one of them. I mean, obviously, if you're doing, I'm gonna go back to video marketing, you can see how many people are watching your videos. If you're doing billboard ads or TV ads or print ads, sometimes that's a lot tougher to figure out did people come through my doors because of those ads. Um, but they all sort of support one another. And then you look for functionality, where if those are all driving traffic to your website, there it is again. Do you have an ability to stay in front of the people that have been to your website? So if you're doing a radio ad and go oh, visit xyzdennis.com, what are you doing on the back end? Are you doing anything to convert that traffic that you're buying the radio ad for? So multi-touch attribution is now, I know I'm saying a lot of buzzwords and things, landing pages, that dentists should be aware of. Um, when you say intake, that's inbound calls? You know, the person at the front desk, right? Yeah, inbound sales. Yeah. What's really amazing is, um, you know, um, the media, you were, you were in the news. You, you were a sports? I was a sports anchor for 10 years. I was in Right here in Phoenix? Last stop was, yeah, right here in Phoenix, CBS 5. For CBS years. 5. Yeah. Yeah, you have a face for TV and YouTube. I have a face for iTunes. <laughs> And uh, I try to do sound only. Um, but when you, you know, the, the, the media, they always talk about the S&P 500, mm -hmm. which doesn't even employ 15% of America. All the news is on Disney and Netflix and Amazon and Microsoft. 85 out of 100 people work for a small business mm -hmm. in America. And um, when you look at those small businesses, besides the owner of the company, the highest paid person is sales taking the inbound calls, mm -hmm. making the outbound calls. They're the ones that are bringing in the million dollar revenue so that you got nine guys back in a machine shop exactly. making a side baler for a combine machine. And, and, and then in dentistry, it's the opposite. The guy who's back there on the welding machine makes all the money and then that little receptionist who does all the inbound sales and outbound sales, no training, no money, no incentives. 
And then you go into offices that fix that with like, uh, there's some training places. One is uh, the Scheduling Institute, which has a place in Atlanta and right here in Phoenix, or they start recording the phone calls mm -hmm. or they start just getting this person up to speed. If you just move her conversion rate from one out of three to two out of three, you just doubled your whole yeah, business. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, it's just amazing how I, I can't believe the dentists don't see that. And then and the, the dentist has two assistants helping her, mm -hmm. but just one little girl up front. And then you say to her, well, how many inbound, how many inbound calls come in today? Oh, I don't know. How many went to voicemail? I don't know. We hear how many of the voicemails the were even, even checked? I don't know. Yep. When but we why have don't those... you know all of that stuff? Because after work, I'm going to the airport and I'm flying to San Diego and I'm taking another course on technical dental excellence. And it's like, dude, you can't even do technical dental excellence because half the patients who need your technical dental excellence can't even get through your gatekeeper. Mm -hmm. And we see it all the time. It's not just dentists, you know, across a lot of the healthcare, you know, private practices that we do work with, you know, that issue is very present where they don't know. You're right. You ask those key questions and they have no idea. Okay. So your website is STNTV. So that stands for Social Television Network TV. What does TV stand for? Television? Television, yeah. So um, social, so it's STN, Social Television Network TV. STNTV. It's just five letters. If my homies went to STNTV, what are they going to find on your website? STNTV.com will find our various services. Sometimes we will just do video production for clients, whether that's, you know, like I've said, testimonial videos for websites, storytelling videos for your websites, um, similar to something like we're doing here where there's a guest and an anchor with some sort of news about your industry. We can do those videos for you. Then there's the marketing component. So maybe you need the videos and then you need the marketing. You need the tracking pixel. You need the ads being created. So we can do that as well. And most of our services are done in like a subscription base because we don't, we realize you don't need to pay upfront for all the video production. So we usually will, especially in the, 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 for the dentists we work with, it's a 12 month program that includes all the videos, all the marketing, all the tracking, all the retargeting, and we're able, and that's why we're talking about measuring lift there, like back to the Dental Brothers. Measuring so lift? Lift in business. Measuring okay. lift in, in, in case volume or patient volume. Over those 12 months, we're able to track the trend of where we were before we started and where we are six or seven months in. And so, and I'll give another example, um, an oral surgeon we work with here. Uh, the most famous one in the state. They have. I agree. I agree. I agree. Yes. Uh, and most credentialed. And I mean, he's, yes. he's all that a bag of chips plus a box of Twinkies. When we sat down with their marketing people um, a year ago, or not a year ago, it was maybe like three or four months ago, we were analyzing the first 12 months of their campaign. We realized we generated almost a million dollars in new business for them, um, which became an, a tremendous return on investment. It was a, you know, somewhere in the 40, 50 to one return on investment range. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking after the program, we're looking to see where your lift in business was, what was the return on investment, and what can we do to continue that trend of success. Because what you're seeing a lot with social media, and you mentioned this before, and the trust factor, is once you start building a foundation of trust, those expert videos keep coming out, the testimonials keep coming out, that stuff starts to balloon. So now that trust factor goes through the roof because you've seen this person over and over again discussing different topics. You've seen their testimonials over and over again praising the practice or praising the dentist. So you don't just want to try something for a month or two months now and say, okay, I gave it a shot. Let's not do that anymore. You have to make a commitment to say, okay, this is what we're going to be doing from now on. We're going to be putting ourselves out there, putting our story out there, and then staying in front of the community. And then again, with social media or digital marketing, as you know, you don't have to market to a huge, you don't have to buy TV time. You don't have to you know, buy a billboard anymore. You can geo target specific zip codes in your area. And so all of those marketing components come together in a real nice little package that ultimately is going to affect the results of your business. I just, my homies are driving right now. So what I do is um, I retweet, I go to your Twitter. Your Twitter is at <clears throat> STN TV now. So STN social television network TV now. And uh, I'm following you. I just retweeted you to my 25,000 Twitter followers. Thank you so much for following me at Howard Ferran. 
and I just retweeted yours, even though you're not following me. I will follow oh you. Oh my After God! Today, and, and which one did I retweet? The dentist one. The dentist. You have the weight loss surgery. I went to the weight loss surgery, and they referred me to a vet to be put down. So <laughs> start. And uh, you know, I think uh, I, I'd quit marking those guys. And uh, so I, I retweeted this one. Um, That's the dental brothers, yeah. Yeah, and then I'm gonna um, retweet. Um, is that the same one? Nope, that's a lawyer. Oh, that's a wolf. Screw that guy. <laughs> there it is. My God. No, I. Uh, is that is that the same? Is that the same dentist right there? Uh, that's a testimony. Those are the guys. Uh, those are the testimonials. But the that's dental a brothers talking about their results with us. Yes. Okay. Well, I just retweeted them twice. And um, first retweet I've ever done to someone that didn't follow me. So I'm so, I appreciate it. I'm just, that's big. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just teasing. Um, but. Um, so what happens if they call you up and, the, and you're going to do this first class video and put on the retargeting mm -hmm. and the landing page, but their website sucks? Do you, do you fix websites? No, nope, we don't do, do any of that. Nope. Who, who's, who's in your uh, value chain to, to do that? Right, because we, we would refer out to somebody who would... But is it like one guy is it, that does your websites? I mean, is there? No, we one have company? several that you know that we work with. Nobody we, you want to mention right now. No, nah, nobody that we want to mention right now. There's, okay. I mean, we can. Point, it depends on what you who you are too. Like if you're a your dentist. You know, you know, in Ottawa, you know where most people see a picture of me first. I, I can't believe when I say, "Where did you first hear about Howard?" Is when they were at the post office. Yeah, they see my picture on the wall, the 10 most wanted. It's there at every is. every post there office, is. and they say, "Who is that guy? <laughs> He's a dentist in Ottawa." And um, so you're mostly, so back to your website. And what happens is, and you may be familiar with this, Howard, too, is sometimes they don't even make it to the website. Nowadays, you, the content, if it's hosted, you know, if we're putting a video out on Facebook, and we're seeing this, and this back to the oral surgeon we work with, we see his activity directly in the comment section of, you know, I need an appointment, where are you located? They've never even gone to the website. They're staying, what's called natively, on the platform, whether that's Facebook, Instagram. But what does that mean, staying there natively? They're not clicking off to go to the website. So some people will. Some people will click off the video, go research the website. But in some cases, they're staying right there. They're in the chat room or they're in the comments section saying, I need to speak with this doctor or I need to speak with this dentist. Where are you located at? When can I make an appointment? So they've never even been to the website. And again, with video retargeting, let's just say they watch a little bit of that video and they've never gone to the website. Again, we can retarget to people who've watched the video. So we've cut out that whole process of even needing to go to the website. We'll, they'll be served up another video. Um, you, you dropped a lot of terms, uh, retargeting, landing page, multi-channel uh, distribution. Um, but what is the difference between, on your website, you, you talk about video production, you talk about video marketing, but then you have digital television. What's the difference That's between digital yeah. television and video production? So in addition to creating content for all of our clients, we're all former local TV people who are creating community content, sort of like you're doing right now, that is back to what we used to do in local television. So we do a couple of live Facebook shows, we do some sports segments, um, and we do a lot of those through paid social ads. So we're growing our own local news station while we're creating content for our advertisers. Where back in TV, the way we made money was we would put on a half hour newscast and then the way we would generate revenue was those 30 second television commercials that would pop up when I would say, we'll be right back after the break. So now we've kind of changed the model a little bit where instead of making 30 second television commercials, we make content for you, about you. And then in some situations, we're able to link that brand with some of the content that we're creating. So let me give you a quick example of this, where we do a local sports story on Arizona Cardinal star Patrick Peterson, you know, creating libraries for children. Well, that segment can be brought to you by X business who works with us. So they're getting a little extra brand recognition for something that, yeah, the content's not about them, but 100,000 people have watched this story on Patrick Peterson, and there's that brand that we work with. Um, similar to what we used to do in TV, this segment is brought to you by X Business. So that's the digital, digital television part. And then there are some organizations that are creating their own shows with us, their own Facebook Live shows, or their own weekly series with us. They have enough content that they need consistent shows. Again, similar to what we're doing here, but for them. 
So we would make the Howard Farron podcast show. Um, it's amazing. You talk about storytelling, building trust. Do you remember um, Rick D'Amico? Yeah, Fox. Uh, 10. Yeah, yeah, when he, he just retired after yeah. 30 years. Oh, my God. I mean, I can't tell you how many little old ladies were <laughs> sad for weeks. And I remember, I, I mean, it, it was it was crazy. It's like they, that, that guy was in their front room every morning for three decades. And I mean, when he went off the air, I had little old ladies that just couldn't watch morning news anymore. Yeah, I mean. I mean they, they, they missed him like it was the loss of a family member. Local TV was, we had our golden age, right? I mean, it was 80s, 90s. I mean, you know, the Anchorman was based off, it's kind of <laughs> making fun of how big the local TV people really were in the 70s. Will Ferrell. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's poking fun at how big of a role we really did have. And then when I got into the business in the 90s, you know, the internet in the early 90s, the internet really wasn't there yet. So I really got to see firsthand how the internet really took away from our attention. And then all of a sudden here, early 2000s, social media came into the picture. And boy, if we were really struggling with the internet as our competition, once social media came about, that's where we really started to suffer because people stopped watching us live at five, live at 6.30, everything suddenly was, and then DVR, everything's on demand now. So I always use this as an example. I can remember it was a 10 o'clock newscast and I'm reading the teleprompter you know, giving fans Suns highlights and remembering that that game was 10 o'clock in the morning that day on the East Coast, you saw all the highlights you needed on your phone. We weren't a service anymore. You didn't need me to bring you the Suns highlights. And then I would toss the commercial, right? Oh, we'll be right back after the break. So if nobody's watching me, who's paying attention to that poor local advertiser who's paid a bunch of money to get a, get a commercial on in my sports break? So it was a natural transition from, okay, this is the way the world is shifting. What do we need to do? We need to start creating content for our local advertisers, not just having them advertise on what we're doing. Um, are you a Netflix guy? Are you a streaming guy? Yeah, that's HBO Go. So you go around and you ask people what their habits are, what their home habits are. Rarely do you find people now who are watching live local TV. Everything is on demand and everything is streaming. So for our world, the local newscaster world, think about what that did for us. We had to post stuff on social media. We had to find ways to be relevant. And unfortunately, when we're posting our stories on social media, nobody needs to watch us at 10. Jimmy Fallon, Jimmy Kimmel, people don't even watch the shows anymore. They just go to YouTube to watch the clips. You have James Corden and Carpool Karaoke. I love that. I've never seen one single episode live of James Corden at night. But that's how people are consuming content now. It's just on demand, it's on YouTube, it's on Facebook, and it's in short, small chunks. So that's what we create for our advertisers now. It's not a 30 second television commercial anymore. It's a series of videos and getting those videos into places where people watch the content. You know, I cannot and will not watch anything on television unless it's recorded before. Right. I, like say Sunday morning you wanna watch Freed Zakari. Shit, it's five minutes of news, five minutes of commercials, five minutes of that half of that hour just, and, and it's such non-targeted. I mean, mm -hmm. they're not targeting a 55-year-old man sitting there to show me restless leg syndrome and, and some wheelchair lift up a stairway. And, and I mean, the, the, there's no targeting. Mm -mm. Um, it's, um, um, but if I, but yeah, I, I um, watch uh, my, my news. My main news is at a HBO. Um, Vice. Vice. Yeah. And, uh, and those guys always claim about how, you know, it's no advertising. Are you out of your freaking <laughs> mind? I have to record that. The first five minutes is just house ads, other shows, HBO bullshit. <laughs> I mean, HBO, um, an ad, your in-house ad is the same ad to me. I mean, if I wanted to watch all that other bullshit you're advertising, I'd be watching that. But I have to actually record it because i got to speed through all the crap that, um, that HBO ads are. But you're, um, nobody's going back to the old way, it, you're, it, to your point. So, mean, so what do you think is dead? I mean, obviously in our lifetime, phone books died. Right, so follow the pattern, right? Phone books, print, same, you know, you're, and local TV was, for us, the next big thing to go. Local TV? Local TV, the, the, the ability to reach people live and on demand, just it, we don't need it anymore. So 
they're struggling. They're trying to come up with different ways to stay relevant. Um, and again, back to my point of sort of cannibalizing themselves, where if they post stuff on social media, if they give the content on social media, nobody needs to watch live at 5 or 6.30. So you run into that thing of, hey, make sure you join us live at 10. I want it now. I'm not going to stick around. Yeah, you know what? We're also moving into two different uh, worlds, um, the affluent and the poor, because the affluent, like, um, Ryan, what did you buy me on YouTube? You subscribed to me so I don't have to listen to any of those ads on YouTube. YouTube Red. YouTube Red. <laughs> and then there's also a YouTube TV, isn't there? Yeah, I think, yeah, there is. I don't know um, anything about it. Either. But, but you know, like um, like Spotify, you know, they have mm -hmm. the subscribers and then the ad-driven ones, and, and they have more subscribers then, then add mm -hmm. the, the free ones that have to listen to an ad because it's like I read a deal um, on Facebook. I think it was from Professor Scott Galloway at NYU School of Stern that said that the average um, ad revenue per Facebook user was like something like $3 a month. Yeah. And they're like, Facebook, why don't you do a subscription revenue? I'll give you five bucks a month. I get, what do they give at Netflix? Twelve dollars a month? Yeah, I think it, it, it goes it incrementally goes yeah, up. Yeah, but I, I would give Facebook twelve dollars a month if I didn't have to ever see another ad again. And that YouTube deal, um, I thought, well, do I really want to pay twelve dollars a month just to never have an ad on YouTube? So I thought, well, what the hell? I did, oh my god, I could never go back <laughs> because Did every you watch, single uh, YouTube video, you got to sit there and wait. For that five, four, three, two, one, skip, skip and now ad. it's all gone. Oh, so so um, so you think? So what's your predictions? Uh, Ten years from now, um, um, what, what magazines and newspapers? What would you say? That's tough. Uh, well, the newspapers, obviously, you you. I mean, that ship has sailed. So, I you every day you would. I mean, you could do it right now and go online and see which are the biggest newspaper chains that have recently shut down or recently closed. Um, Radio stations, um, consolidation is happening. So you look at a market like here in Phoenix where we've had the station I used to work for, CBS, merged with Channel 3. So consolidation is going to be happening. And what we would call, um, you know, when you're airing two shows at the same time on different channels where local news, you're going to see the same newscast on Channel 3 as you're going to see on Channel 5 at night. Or That's unheard of. You know, we wouldn't <laughs> ever do that before, but now because of the consolidation thing, you're seeing the same newscast on Channel 3 as you're seeing on Channel 5. So what's next? I really don't know from a you know, virtual reality standpoint. From I just think the Apple TVs, the smart TVs, that's the future. Everybody's going to be an, on an app-based sort of experience in their home. Yes, this is number one screen. You know, they always call this the second screen. This is now your number one screen. The number two screen will be your, your Apple TV or your smart TV device. Well, I think people don't realize that if you um, look at your big screen, I mean, 90% of what you're seeing is all the periphery. And if you hold your, your iPhone out in front of your big screen and pull it in, it's not very close, <laughs> and that covers up your big screen. Right. And um, I would much rather sit on my patio. Um, take Shark Tank. Yeah. Um, if I go turn on Shark Tank, it's just all it is commercials. I can go out to Google or YouTube, search that Shark Tank episode show, set it right there next to my uh, beer. I mean, I mean my orange juice, cranberry <laughs> juice cocktail, and watch the whole thing. And, and it's dark out. I mean, so it's really. Um, but you know the scariest thing I ever have seen on the iPad. My two-year-old granddaughter, one day I was trying to get her to eat, and she was on that iPad, so I tried to take it away from her. I had grabbed her arm to, to take it away. I lifted her up by her forearm, and she was hanging on her iPad like it was for dear life. Like if she let go of it, she'd be eaten by a hyena. My daughter's the same way. Oh, we my work on it with God. We, we, it's, it's one of those things that you never thought you'd have to deal with, but it's very true. It's, you know, I mean, so many, so many studies out there that basically say, you know, the iPad, cocaine, same thing happens to the brain of a, of a child. And there's, you, know, you just have to, as a parent, take precautions and take the right steps to, you know, eliminate screen time as much as you can because that experience, yes, the, whoa, She's gripped. This is a kung fu grip on my iPad. This is not right, <laughs> and it affects their mood too. Oh, you know, yeah. they, if they're on that thing for a couple hours. You, we can tell, and when we remove it from, you know, playtime or an extended period of time, we see a difference. We really do in the in the in the moods of our of our kids. But you know how you make money with uh, with that addiction? When you go out drink with your four or five friends, everybody puts their uh, self their smartphone leaves it on. 
And uh, first, uh, oh, wife, yeah, it's great. first you wife that the calls time. your drinking buddy, <laughs> you pick up the tab. So you tell your wife, I'm going out drinking with my boys. This is a serious time. Don't call me. First wife that calls, picks up the tab. For the well, whole you don't table. even have to do the call thing. You just have to put your device in the middle of the table. And the first one to grab their device, just out of an addiction habit, first one to grab their device loses and has to pay the entire tab. You see that happen all the time. You can go out to dinner and you see you know, somebody cross the way. With, you go with out the, to dinner. You go to Makayo's. And you look at the table next to you, a mom, dad, two kids, and they're all looking at their screen. Yeah, everybody is. And, yeah. and again, and there's, I don't know how you want to get into, you know, the philosophy of it or the ethics of it. And, the, and you just, it, it's sad, but at the same, that's where we are today. So as an advertiser or as, as a business trying to get your message out there, that's where people are. You can't ignore that fact. So what are you going to do to get their attention there? And... So when you go to Makayo's and you look down and, or you look across the restaurant and you see all those people, your business, you want to be there. You want to have their attention. Well, what it, what it tells me is this. The biggest lucrative businesses are the, the addiction business, nicotine. <laughs> I mean, they, they banned all the advertising and it's still um, um, caffeine, mm -hmm. um, um, Starbucks. Yeah. Um, it's just an addiction. Chocolate is just caffeine. Nicotine, caffeine, and chocolate um, caffeine and coffee, it's the same yeah. molecule, um, amphetamine monkey. And I think the reason that um, uh, Facebook and Google and uh, Alphabet, uh, mm -hmm. the, the valuation so high is because they're in the addiction yeah. business. And they specifically know how to make it addictive by leaving an open loop, giving you notifications, mm -hmm. giving you noises. Um, they're in the addiction business. Absolutely. And it's going to backfire on them just like it backfired on Marlboro. Just like it backfired on cigarettes, they the companies knew they were um, uh, gaming addiction by increasing the nicotine content, and now we know the social media people are increasing the addiction with open loop cycles, notifications, sounds, all these things that make your daughter have the kung fu grip. And if they if they don't um, back off, um, and you know who's gonna? That's just a pretty color. The the the, 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 <laughs> cult, the, the and, and it'll never come from Washington D.C. because they're just too incompetent. It's always gonna come from the EU, who's like the uh, smart brother in the family, and the Americans are the big, tall, bully, dumb one, or a renegade attorney, state general. Kind of go back to the Microsoft days, yep. you know. So um, what's gonna really go after and possibly break up Facebook and Alphabet? It's going to be the EU. They, everybody on a website is getting all their uh, notifications to upgrade their user deal. Mm -hmm. And that's not because of America. That's for the EU. That's why on Dentaltown, that's why you got that. Man, we were with lawyers for days and days and days because the penalties are off the charts. But, you, but mark my words. For the with, data, yeah. With the social media deal that um, um, within the next five years, some attorney general is going to have it up to here wants to make a name for himself, and is going to go after these guys um, because um, it really is um, changing society. And they're changing, as we, you know, they're changing as we speak. There's different algorithms and different newsfeed things happening that they're trying to rectify everything that has been done. And we see that firsthand with businesses coming to us saying, hey, what do these changes mean? What do I have to do? And you just have to continue to roll with the punches and follow the policies, basically. You know, yeah. the, the most recent one was... Facebook saying, okay, we're going to give less weight to businesses in the news feed. So if you are a person uh, sharing a photo, your post is going to get more weight than a business who's posting content. And again, that's just another way of saying advertise. If you advertise with us, you're going to see more exposure in our news feed. Fa Facebook has never been, in my opinion, um, honest or sincere. I mean, I have nine years of college, and whenever they have a privacy update... Nine years of college, and I read it, and I don't understand it. Now, I'm pretty sure I'm smarter than the average kid in high school reading that policy. I mean, it, I mean, and then they're always We got it all for all of them, iTunes, for, you know, for yeah. Spotify. They're all going to send the policy. Ten yeah. pages long. Yeah. Um, but um, Eric Sperling, the social television network, uh, how do they contact you? Just go to stntv.com? Yeah, so stntv.com is our website. There's a contact form right on that website. Um the way the process typically works is we'll schedule like a strategy call with your practice to determine you know what your needs are and then we usually have a, what's called a pre-production meeting we determine all the video content that is required and then after that we kind of schedule the shoot and typically those shoots can be done on location at our studio um, whatever works whatever's most convenient 
Well, you've been extremely informative, and uh, fun. thank you so much for coming over to the house and spending an hour with my homies. It was damn informative yeah. for me, so I know it was informative for them. Thank you, you so much. You did take, I saw you. You were taking legitimate notes. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> and, and I was texting, I, I emailed you and my website um, um, guy about those questions because you know, cool. I, I wanted it to. And that's what keeps this show real. I mean, I'm a real dentist in Ahwatukee, yes. and my dental office is 30 years old. I know I look like I'm only 30, <laughs> but I'm actually 55. And um, so, yeah, we're keeping it real in Ahwatukee. Thank you so much right, for coming thank on you, the Harry, show. All right, thank you, Harry. appreciate it. You know, there's an old saying in marketing. You need to fish where the fish are. Well, today, just look around, and you will see what every other business is seeing as well. The majority of your customers are now on mobile and social. But how do you reach those customers? And what type of content works best? Well, we now have the answer. And you're going to hear from some of our advertising clients in just a moment. But here at the Social Television Network, we are a national team of Emmy-nominated and award-winning news and marketing professionals. And we tell local business stories on social media. Now, those stories inform, empower, and attract more customers to you. Your business has a story to tell, and we can use that story to help you sell. Now, obviously, we're creating videos here, but you should see the tools we have to tell that story. Industry-leading production facilities, the best equipment on the market, some of the most talented news people behind the camera, in front of the camera, and in the production process. Now, these videos produce real results, but video is just half the equation. Here's the key to the whole thing. Instead of using a traditional television signal, we broadcast your videos to your local market via our proprietary distribution model called FunnelPoint. Now forget crossing your fingers and hoping people watch. With our proven FunnelPoint system, we combine the TV content with advanced social media marketing tools. We are funneling the story of your business through the awareness, consideration, and conversion elements of a traditional sales funnel. FunnelPoint is what we always dreamed of with traditional television and now it allows you to grow your business like never before. Oh, by the way, we are a credentialed news organization that continues to grow. All of this creates additional awareness and new customers for our advertising clients. Now, you know social media is where all your customers' eyes are, and now you finally have the best tool to get your message out in front of them. Bottom line, if you want to start reaching your current and potential customers here, you need to think beyond traditional advertising and start engaging with FunnelPoint. We knew that you know, the, the billboards, the print media, and all that stuff was probably going to be dying out pretty quickly, and so we wanted to jump into the next best thing, and in our opinion, that was going to be social, and that was going to be video. And so it just seemed like a perfect fit to join the social television network. The phone has been ringing from our initial ad, and you know, seeing people share our video and, and people commenting on it. That's exactly what we were looking to achieve. We wanted to get our name out there, get our brand out there, and start building up a bigger audience. This is the way of the future. I mean, if you're not engaging your audience through social media, through internet, you're not going to survive. Working with Social Television Network has been a real delight and a pleasure. I've had several different social media vendors and nothing's come close to the professionalism and the degree of outreach that I've had with the Social Television Network. Using Social Television Network, we've seen astronomical results with our campaigns. The beauty of this platform is that it is measurable down to the conversion. We started seeing results right away. We've received many phone calls from our videos that the social television network has done for us. It's been probably the single biggest uh, reason we've grown how we have. By using the social television network, it's going to allow us to get the reach we want to the right consumer that's targeted, that actually is looking for what we're doing, which is selling homes and finding homes for buyers. We've had to turn digital and go the internet and do Facebook. We have noticed an increase of calls, so it's been amazing. Basically what we did is we took away our budget from our print advertising. So we hit them on the digital which let us hit a whole new group of people that we weren't reaching before and we were able to increase our sales by almost 100% for the first two months. Typically for Mother's Day we would have about 400 seatings on average and 
the first month after we started the advertising, we jumped up to 600 seatings for the first Mother's Day, which was a record. Okay, so let's get started. Contact us today for your free advertising analysis tailored specifically to your business needs and goals. We want your business to achieve the highest return on your marketing investment. And now with the Social Television Network, we can help deliver. So what are you waiting for? Contact us today.